So here's a Dixie Narco vending machine that I got for free because it had a short. That turned out to be a relatively straightforward fix, which I covered in another video. Uh, for this one, I'm going to go over issues that you can run into with the actual vent motors inside the unit because a number of those had issues. So I'm going to go over how to clean, inspect, and repair those. The problem I'm having now, uh, now that I've been able to get it working and cooling properly, that all of the bend motors don't work properly. Some of them work great every single time, and some of them uh, stick or turn longer than they're supposed to or automatically bend. Some of them don't turn at all. So I'm gonna go through now and troubleshoot, see why some of them are working properly and some of them aren't. Um, one of the first things that I'm noticing by looking at all of these different bend switches is they've got two switch controls for each bend motor. We've got a large macro switch and a smaller micro switch. And you can see, if we get closer here, that some of them, the vast majority of them have the macro switch, which is this right here, resting on the lip of this cam. And the, the micro switch is resting inside the channel. That's the case for all of them, except for this one right here. They're both resting in the channel. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. That one's number four. I don't, all the rest of them are resting where they're supposed to be right now, except for, it looks like number six has the same issue. So what, how these are supposed to work is when you push down on the, I know number three works, so I'll show you that one. Uh, when you push down the micro switch, it rotates all the way through its cycle then the micro switch falls back into the next channel and the macro switch stays up on the lip just just here and if I run that through again you'll notice that up here is where the you've got this motor turning up here and you've got this park gear that clicks in in between and stops this from rotating when it when the micro switch falls into the channel so you see it pops up and then that gear pops back down into place uh, let's look at number six here, where they're both down in the channel. And they both clicked in again. If we zoom out, yeah, you, you see that uh, that park gear just fall into place uh, after it had already stopped? That's not how that's supposed to work. So I'm gonna take all of these apart, definitely number six, but I'm gonna take each one of these apart and clean this whole assembly. It's probably just gummed up right here stopping this gear from popping back into place and stopping the motor's rotation when it's supposed to. But before I do that, I'll show you that I've got a couple others that are really screwed up. Like I think number eight, number eight doesn't do anything. <laughs> What's the problem? Number nine, the motor clearly spins, but nothing is turning. So I might have some broken gears in the back. So we've got a number of problems with this machine, but we're gonna start by just cleaning each one of these assemblies, uh, always a good first step. Definitely seen some better days. This one here, number number two, it's all corroded. So cleaning all these is gonna be the first step and hopefully that'll fix a number of my problems, but I imagine I'm still gonna have to revisit uh, eight and 10 and maybe one or two others before I'm able to call it fixed. The way to get these apart is you're gonna need a Torx. A torx screw, each one of these is a Torx. that guy. Get these two out. Washer here, make sure not to lose that. Set that aside. And I'm gonna lubricate every one of these points. First, clean the whole thing off with brake parts cleaner, and then lubricate it all. It does feel a little bit uh, rough, it doesn't rotate extremely freely like I'd like. And make sure that uh, all these parts are rotating freely. This 
this feels a little gravelly too, so let's see if I can pull this hole. Okay, there's a whole motor, it just slides out. And there's a gear on the back. So I imagine that one that didn't turn at all, where this was spinning and the motor itself wasn't, or the, uh, the release mechanism wasn't working, it's probably these teeth right here that are, that are worn down or stripped out. Here's the motor brake assembly off the machine. I've got it on a lint-free rag. There aren't too many pieces to this. You've got the, the brake here and a little brass ferrule that it rides on with the spring, which is captured right there, so you don't have to worry too much about losing that. And then on the other side, you've got the, the weight that pulls the park into place, the park gear into place. And to clean those up, I'm just gonna use a little bit of glass cleaner. I'm not sure exactly why, but all the things that I've read online suggest glass cleaner only not to use oil on these parts. Could be because of the nylon, because I'm sure the brass can handle it. Uh, maybe they don't want it dripping on other parts of the machine, not entirely sure, but we can definitely do that. And it comes pretty clean, pretty quickly. Now this piece is captured, this brass piece right here. So that one, you just have to Kind of clean by getting the glass cleaner in there and rotating it around really well. But it already feels like it's moving much more easily than it was before. This piece, you can take it off completely. Make sure that any um, residue is gone. Sometimes these will get a little bit of build up. But that's already nice and clean. No rough spots, nothing that my fingernail catches on when I drag it across the surface, so I think we're good there. Clean the inside of this really quickly. Just make sure there's nothing in there either. All right, good to go. Now for reassembly, by the way, I kept the screws with this because it helps to align everything and hold it together. So for reassembly, there's two sides to this gear. There's this side and this side, which has a few more channels and passageways in it. This is the side that you want going down. Just like that, and this brass piece goes right inside. For the weight, put it on this way. And now make sure that you put this, there's a little tooth at the end right here, and you're gonna wanna put it right in that slot right there so that these two move together. So when this weight, weighted arm pulls down, it'll pull uh, the weight of it will pull that gear into place and it'll park the motor. And now you're ready to put it back together. I took this apart further just so that we could get a really close up look on how exactly these Venn motors work. Here's one that I've removed completely. Uh, it was actually pretty easy. There's only two bolts up top, one bolt at the bottom, and there's one, two, three connectors down here, and there's two connectors up top for the, the motor which looks like this. So the way this works is when that motor actuates, it spins this armature, which has a gear, gear teeth on the back side of it. Inside here, it's really hard to see. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, but there are little gear teeth in there. This goes in, lines with those gear teeth, and what you'll see is when this spins, you watch the gray ring. As this spins, that gray ring moves ever so slowly. So this has to spin really fast to move that ring and actually vend sodas from the machine. So you can see it's moved a little bit, but that took a lot of turning. On the back side, this gray ring has a pin in it, and that pin fits into this slot right here. And when this spins, it's connected to this piece in here that's holding sodas and actually bends them out, just like that. So that's really the whole mechanism and the way it works. So that unit that I had, I believe it was on number eight that wasn't turning at all. The top motor was spinning and the piece up here was spinning, but the gray cam wasn't moving at all. Either the armature teeth right here 
are stripped off or the the gears inside this unit are stripped off. So now I'm gonna take the take this thing apart to see what those gears look like. I'm gonna flip it over. And we have to take this little pin out. Hopefully that just pulls right out. Yes, it does. Don't lose that. Everything won't work. And we've got Torx again on the bottom. Go ahead. This is gonna be hard to do one-handed. Okay, I just removed all the screws. Now I can remove this back plate. There we go. Yeah, we've got a whole gear assembly in there. And right over here, this tiny little hole is where that armature comes in. So it engages with, with this gear right here. But if any of those teeth are broken, then you're gonna get areas where uh, or the mechanism doesn't work or it won't bend, which is probably what I'll find on that other one that's not spinning. But this is what a functioning one is supposed to look like. Upon further inspection, this thing is just a grab bag of problems. Uh, we just cleaned out and inspected number two, so now it works properly. It stops immediately and you get the macro switch still on the elevated portion of the cam. Number three, get a slow stop so everything, uh, both switches fall into the, into the valley of the cam. So that one just needs to be clean. So number three is dirty. Number four, the top motor spins. Okay, it's dirty too. Top motor spins, but you can see the bottom. Ooh, it's just kind of weak. Or it only grabs in places. So this one's probably missing some teeth. And yeah, like I said, it's dirty. They both fall into the channel but it's weak, needs new gears. Not sure exactly what's wrong with it. Probably gears on number four. Number five, dirty, both fall into the channel. Number six, dirty, both fall into the channel. Number seven. Huh? Number seven had a nice clean stop, so that one's probably fine. I'll clean it anyway. Number eight, number eight doesn't do anything, so I don't hear a buzzing. The top motor doesn't spin, so this thing has probably got an electrical problem. So, boy, we've got everything from dirty to gears to electrical problem. Number nine, top motor spins, bottom cam doesn't move at all, so probably another gear issue. And then number 10, nice clean stop. So we run the gamut on this one. Here's what I discovered on number four, which if you remember was top motor was spinning but the gears weren't really going or they were kind of weak they would get hung up in a lot of places I took the gearbox apart and I removed all the other gears except for the main gear that's attached to the to the cam on the other side and what I found is because none of the gear teeth were missing so that wasn't the problem uh, they all looked in pretty much perfect condition what I found is you can hold this gear still and you can spin this cam and it will actually spin. There's a little bit of drag, but it will spin on the, on the shaft right here. And let me show you what I discovered here. I took this shaft and main gear out, and then I drove the shaft out through the center, and I found that it's just a steel shaft with splines grooved into it. And they look like they're in pretty decent shape. And then on the inside of this hub, I thought I was going to find some kind of gear mechanism, maybe a, a one-way clutch or something of that nature, but instead it's just a solid assembly. Just a solid bushing that's part of the gear. And you can see that it's completely smooth inside. So now what I suspect is that there were splines on the shaft here and there were splines on the inside and they were pressed together to always move as one unit and over time through a jam or something um, this the splines in the shaft being a harder metal this being steel and this looking like aluminum on the inside of this gear uh, this was the weaker metal and it just ground away so that this spun freely inside so that is interesting but it creates a bit of a dilemma because when you look at the entire gear assembly where this goes, there's not a lot of room to fix this. When you see, so the way it normally sits is right there. And there's this other gear 
right here. So everything's in there pretty tight, and then the top plate goes right flush on top. So there's no room for, if I were to put this back in, let's go through the bottom. So if I were to put that back in and just fix this shaft to this gear by the normal methods, like if I were to spot weld it right there uh, around the sides, there would be, when the top plate goes on, that weld would catch on the top plate. So there's no clearance there. If I were to drill a hole through and put a cotter pin in, uh, you can see how tight the clearance is between this flange and the next gear right there. So if I put something through, I have to grind it almost completely flat because we've got just a hair of clearance between these two gears. We're gonna use a drill. If you want to know what I'm doing here, there wasn't really enough room to get any JB Weld in into this pressed gear fitting. Nothing for it to hold on to. So now I've made three little channels that'll hold just enough. Basically, I'm just roughing up the surface and allowing a channel where some of the JB Weld can get in there and keep it from turning. The other side, the shaft, which is right here, already has these grooves. So the JB Weld will bite into those and lock this still. But now, you can see there's just a little bit of daylight. And those grooves that I've worn, and I'm actually gonna make them a little bit bigger, um, for it to have something to hold on to on the gear side as well, and not just on the shaft. So I finished putting three grooves inside as you can see uh, i didn't make them all that big just big enough to hold on to the to the jb weld and every time i use jb weld for something i feel like i'm giving up and it's temporary solution but then it ends up lasting longer than just about anything else you could do so i actually think it's a pretty decent solution in this case and if it ever does give up it's not the end of the world maybe you're out of soda so not too much of a risk in this situation. So I'm gonna apply, I'm just gonna use a screwdriver, just clean it off afterwards, just a little bit around the top, all the way around. Like that. Now there's, uh, the splines are not exactly in the middle of this piece. The longer side goes down and I'm gonna put a little bit more, make sure that it gets well into each one of those little splines that does exist, because that's what's gonna hold it onto this central shaft. And those grooves that I cut are what's gonna hold it onto the outer gear once it's driven back in place. Don't need all that much, just coverage. That's all I'm really looking for, and it's going to draw a bunch more into the hole as I drive this through. Okay. Push that right there. Maybe put a little bit more around now. Because this is going to be the last step. It's going to be a lot harder to get it in. To add more once the central shaft has been driven into place. Okay, that should be good. I've driven that a little 
far. I've got another one here that I can use to, to measure against. And it looks like I went, actually, that looks darn near perfect. I might give it a, the smallest tap back in the other direction. Clean this JB weld off. And add a little bit to the other side before I can tap it back. So I can see a little bit of daylight right there. Not daylight, but I can see that there isn't any weld in that particular groove or in this one. So just last chance to add a little bit more. That one was actually covered pretty well. And then once this is driven in the appropriate distance, which it's very close to now, just a little... Once it's exactly lined up, I'll just make sure to wipe off all the remaining weld. Boy, that looks close. This is the way to tell right here. Yeah, I don't think you can do much better than that. I don't think the tolerances are quite that tight for it to make much of a difference at this point. So now, just clean that. Now, if you do end up with some still left up at the top here, the case won't close afterwards, but fortunately you can grind sand JB Weld fairly easily. So you could always just kink a piece of sandpaper in a 90 degree angle and get it right in there and be able to clean that up. But much easier to do it now. Okay. I'll let that sit. Cure time is 15 hours. Try it out in the machine. If it works, then we'll do it to the other two. Now that our JB Weld is dried, let's put it back together. We have it. All right, we've got the machine on, and the ones that I just finished JB welding up those uh, those main gears were numbers four and eight. Stocked them full of drinks, and let's see if they work now. So number four. Oh. Works, but I missed it. Let's try that again. Perfect. 
and number eight is right here. So that solution definitely seems to work. This one's a little sticky. It looks like I've got to clean the motor up here too, but that will work. You could obviously replace that motor, cost you $25 or more depending on where you buy it from, uh, or you could fix it the way I did, cheap and easy. So now we're in a position where this whole machine has been fixed for free. I had to spend nothing on parts unless you count a little bit of a tube of JV weld, so about six bucks. Not bad for a machine I got for free.